So let's move on. Here's another study, this in January of 2022, and it looks at the experience of hyperfocus and flow in college students with and without ADHD. So, you know, that's great. Now we're going to look at whether hyperfocus and flow are the same or different. Uh, unfortunately, as I've said in other commentaries, when you focus exclusively on college students and you study them, you have a highly biased sample of people that don't represent the broad spectrum either of the population or of the population of ADHD individuals, many of whom don't go to college or if they do, don't finish college. Some of them do, but the point is you've chosen a very unusual population to study. So here we're going to look at hyperfocus and flow. It's in college students with and without significant symptoms of ADHD, but let's understand that this is, there's 85 undergraduates being used here. They're volunteers. They've simply filled out rating scales. There's no clinical evaluation. There's no evidence of disorder here, but let's take a look at what they found. Yes, there were significant correlations that they found between most elements of hyperfocus as measured by their rating scales uh, and with flow, but their relationship was negative. Fascinating. Despite the fact that that early review uh, hypothesized that these two might be related, if not synonymous, at least in this study with the rating scales that they were using, they found that the higher your level of ADHD symptoms, the higher your amount of flow, the lower, excuse me, the, the amount of hyperfocusing, the lower the amount individuals reported experiencing flow. Um, so that needs to be explored further because that's really a one-off, so to speak, a very unusual, unexpected finding. But overall, they did find that people with higher ADHD symptoms reported higher levels of hyperfocusing in a college student population, okay? All right, let's go to the next study. What else is out there? Here's an article from 2018, Living in the Zone, focuses on hyperfocus and adult ADHD. Uh, it happens to be in the journal ADHD. Uh, and once again, this is a study that doesn't use a clinical population of people with the disorder. It focuses on individuals, volunteers, who had high levels of ADHD symptoms. And they looked at several different samples, a bigger pilot sample, about 251 people, followed by a replication sample. And then they took these two samples and split them into high and low ADHD symptoms, gave them various rating scales, including rating scales of hyperfocusing. Uh, and what did they find? Well, here we go again. There is some correlation. Higher ADHD symptoms seem to be uh, related to higher reports of hyperfocusing. Uh, in this case, uh, it was more frequent in school, hobbies, and screen time, whereas it was less likely to be found at work and in uh, other task-related settings, such as uh, chores at home, things like that, home responsibilities. Uh, but here, here's a positive link. So, you know, chalk one up here. There does seem to be something between symptoms and hyperfocusing. But again, not using clinic referred populations. Okay, next study up is this particular study. Whoops, uh, it looks like it's gone. All right, well, it was also a study, by the way, since it appears that we've lost it, uh, of college students in Canada. Uh, again, not clinically referred individuals. Uh, and what did it find? Uh, that there was, in fact, a small positive relationship, significant between elevated symptoms and ADHD. So what do we got so far? We got three symptoms looking, or excuse me, three studies looking at ADHD symptoms, not disorder, and degree of hyperfocusing. And it does suggest there's something going on here between these reports. I want to stop for a moment and point out one major confound in studies like this, and that is that hyperfocusing as a characteristic of adult ADHD has been stated so often in the trade literature that what we may simply be seeing here is that people with ADHD have been so bombarded with the fact that they possess this particular ta talent, if you will, or at least attribute of attention that they may be found in subsequent studies to report that they have it a lot. So could this be a situation in which media uh, 
overexposure of the term is leading us to find it in research studies that measure hyperfocusing solely based on self-reports on rating skill. I don't know. That's an interesting question as a scientist that uh, I would want to see investigated uh, because have you simply trained people with ADHD to self-report higher levels? The uh, question is, do they really? That's going to be hard to test, as that review pointed out, because we don't have measures that are objective where we can go out and measure people's hyperfocusing, even induce it in the lab, uh, and try to understand what that's all about. So, you know, could be a confound here between the concept and the culture and what we're hearing in self-reports of people coming into studies with high levels of ADHD symptoms. Okay, here's another study of hyperfocusing. Uh, the beauty of this one is that it is being done in patients with ADHD. So here's a study that takes a group of patients who are diagnosed with ADHD based on the DSM criteria at the time, which was DSM-4, uh, and then looks at those who will take stimulant medication and those who are naive to stimulant medication. And it's going to compare these two groups of people from ADHD clinics to a control group. Unfortunately, the control group is healthy university students, not simply people from the general population, or better yet, people seen at the same clinics who didn't have ADHD but had some other disorder. That would have been a more ideal control group. But because when you use university students as your control group and you use clinic referred patients, you exaggerate the possibility of differences here between them. But let's give them the benefit of the doubt, okay? We're studying clinic referred populations. What do they find? There was no difference between total hyperfocusing scores on the rating scale and ADHD self-report scales between the two patient groups with and without medication. So it doesn't look like medication's making much of a difference as to whether adults with ADHD, the disorder, self-report hyperfocusing. So uh, that's an interesting finding in its own right. It did find that hyperfocusing was elevated in the self-reports of the clinic referred adults with ADHD, regardless of their medication status, when they were compared to the university students. So um, this study would suggest that it's not just among people with high symptoms of ADHD, but also among clinic referred adults with ADHD as well. So, you know, it's, an, it's a nice study by going into the, the clinic now and looking at diagnosed individuals. Okay, another study that has just uh, been found, it's in 2020 in Research and Developmental Disabilities. This study focuses on testing the relationship between ADHD and hyperfocusing. Uh, it is also studying uh, clinic referred patients versus healthy controls. A very large sample of healthy controls here, uh, about 1,100 individuals. Uh, and then it goes on to study patients as well. And, and here are the highlights of the study. We could not demonstrate a higher frequency of hyperfocus in adults with ADHD relative to healthy controls. Hyperfocusing as an experience was found both in healthy individuals and in ADHD individuals. And although there is somewhat of a correlation between hyperfocusing and ADHD symptoms in the general population, it was not found to be more frequent in clinically diagnosed disordered individuals compared to the general population. The study did find that age and education appeared to be important determinants of people reporting hyperfocusing. The older you are, the less you reported it. Uh, and, of course, educational level uh, was related to it as well. The paper concludes that there appear to be motivational, situational, and clinical aspects to this concept of hyperfocus that need much more research before we can take it as a given slam dunk correlate or gift associated with adult ADHD. So, you know, there's a fly in the ointment here. We've got one study of clinic patients that found it. And we've got another study of clinic patients using a better control group that didn't find it. So, you know, it's kind of a mixed bag of results out there when it comes to the clinical disorder. Uh, let's look at another study here. 
that I found in the literature. This one in Frontiers in Psychiatry, just published this year. Hyperfocusing symptoms and their relationship to internet addiction in individuals with ADHD. Uh, and this is a study of a general population sample, not a clinical sample, but 3,500 Japanese adults filled out questionnaires related to these various constructs, ADHD, hyperfocusing, internet addiction, and what did they find? They found that ADHD traits were significantly associated with reports of internet addiction. Uh, we've seen that before. If you've seen my other commentaries, my other research reviews, that we have seen. So there's some link between how much you have ADHD and your likelihood of qualifying as internet addicted. They also found that ADHD traits were associated with higher reports of hyperfocusing. So again, just like other studies that use symptoms, not disorders, right? there is some link to higher hyperfocusing scores. But in this case, it's also a link to internet addiction. Now, here's the finding I, I thought was fascinating. They did what's called mediation analysis, that, and they showed that hyperfocusing significantly mediated the link between ADHD symptoms and internet addiction. What, what do they mean by that? It means that the more you had ADHD symptoms, the more you hyperfocused, but the more you reported hyperfocusing, the more you were at risk for internet addiction. And it was the hyperfocusing, not the ADHD specifically, that seemed to mediate that relationship to potential addiction. I might point out, by the way, that in that attitude.com article, there was some suggestion in there on the downside of hyperfocusing as being possibly related to this kind of perseverative or even addictive behavior, in this case, to screens uh, and to the internet. So, you know, it's not an all positive picture out there, even though we found a few studies that did find uh, a relationship between symptoms and hyperfocusing, we're now seeing that that doesn't necessarily translate into clinically diagnosed individuals where the evidence is conflicting. And now we're seeing the darker side of hyperfocusing, which might be putting people at risk for certain forms of addiction, in this case, internet addiction. Uh, one final paper here that I was able to find in my literature search, uh, which I found, uh, rather interesting because I certainly didn't expect it. This is a systematic review of the literature on the relationship between hyperfocusing and criminal offending uh, and particular types of offending. And it goes through and searches the literature related to uh, psychopathy, autism, other forms of mental disorders, ADHD included, looking at people with and without uh, diagnoses of these, but specifically now focusing on a vulnerability to aggression, sexual offending, radicalism, and even stalking of other individuals within populations that are known to be offending in these areas. Uh, and what they found is that uh, the hyperfocusing was not found to be exclusively related to one type of offense or to one diagnosis, that it was found to be across various disorders, both males and females, and that hyperfocusing did seem to contribute to some extent to risk of offending. And then they go on to talk about the need for more research and what interventions might need to be targeted at hyperfocusing. Uh, so there's a lot to absorb here, but uh, to me the takeaway lessons are that the claims earlier in the 1990s and subsequently in trade books and so on that ADHD is linked to hyperfocusing did not have a strong evidence base and probably were premature. Subsequent research has gone in to look at how we define hyperfocusing and then has looked at its relationship to elevated symptoms of the disorder, where there does seem to be some kind of positive relationship, positive meaning a significant correlation. The higher one is ADHD, the more likely you are to report hyperfocusing. But that's in general population samples or university students who just have symptoms. When we move into the clinical area, there appears to be only a couple of studies, and they are contradictory. One study suggests that it's there and that taking stimulants doesn't seem to affect that relationship. The second study of clinic populations didn't find 
ADHD adults to be hyper-focusing any more than other individuals do. Finally, while there may be a positive side to hyper-focusing, as the original Attitude article suggested, in that intense periods of concentration could be leading to high levels of productivity in areas of things that you're interested in, it also talked about there could be a darker side to hyper-focusing, and we did see that coming up in a couple of studies here about risk for addiction, particularly to internet addiction, and risk of particular kinds of offending. So it's a real mixed bag of results out there, people, and I would not want somebody to convey this as an open and shut case that ADHD links to hyperfocusing as a disorder and that hyperfocusing is always a positive thing to have. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, depends on the context uh, and depends on, of course, a number of other individual factors. So uh, overall, I would think that this is an area ripe for further investigation. Would be wonderful if we could find objective ways to actually measure this instead of relying just on self-report rating scales, which as I said, could be contaminated by a rather culture-wide belief that ADHD is linked to hyperfocusing, even though that's not always demonstrated in the literature. So uh, it's a very conflicting field uh, and not to be taken for granted. And I guess that's the bottom line to me is that we need to explore this a little further before we read all these articles that are out there on just what a positive asset, benefit, or gift hyperfocusing is to the individuals with ADHD. Maybe, maybe not. All right. See you next time for another commentary. Please join me for my research reviews that appear weekly. I hope you'll explore some of the other longer lectures on this website. And as always, thank you again for joining me on my channel uh, and for subscribing if you're so interested. And be well. Thanks.